como, dis, como que si te enseñan un bebé y dices, está bonito, este, obviamente, y en tu mente no piensas eso, es que no estás siendo sincero, pero si lo dices que está bien culero, se oye feo. Another season, another set of shit to review, followed by six months of waiting. We've made it to one year of this system, and boy does it not get tiresome at all. I'll be completely upfront with you people, I didn't care much for this selection of variants. They all looked rather average and uninteresting to me. Call it exhaustion or whatever, but having this shit drop by every three months removes the flair of new variants, if that makes any sense. Either that or I haven't been all that focused. Truth be told, I've been busy making the most of my PS3 and its custom firmware for the last couple of weeks. Getting the DLC for F2 working was definitely satisfying, I'll tell you that much. But enough with the off-topic crap. As for the variants from last season, I assure you, Indomitable and Apex Complex are still very relevant. Coral Scout has the ingredients to make for a bothersome variant at the right position, but she functions more as a skill check more than anything. Every 5 combo hits, she gains 2 armor stacks, removes 2 debuffs, and gains 30% meter. Already this sets a hazardous situation, where the slightest fuck up will cost you the match. But there's a simple solution. You just low combo her. Yeah, that might be a bit condescending to say, but it's the simplest and most effective strategy when going up against her. Just make use of characters like Beowulf or Cerebella and you're all set. Although she has an extra factor that can make her attack more annoying. While benefiting from any buff, she gains 4% health back and inflicts Wither. So at least she gets to stall out for a while longer and potentially prevent a blockbuster finish. But all things considered, it's not the most obnoxious disruption in the world. If it really bothers you, just roll with immunity and you should be good. She filters lesser experienced players. A next generation Mio and Forever, if you will. But once you figure out how to counter her, she falls down pretty quick. I mean, you can always hex her. That's an effective cheat code. What time is it? Time for you to shut up! <laughs> Dealbreaker is a more aggressive version of Inkling, although functioning much differently. Her main game is all about gambling, gaining either immunity, haste or enrage, and inflicting guard break and two random debuffs whenever anyone uses a blockbuster. That's a pretty big package of things. And inflicting guard break is what allows her to be quite the projectile spammer. Not only that, but she may be able to gain either enrage, regen or unflinching whenever anything expires on the opponent. She's designed in many ways to annoy the player if set up on defense. But does she succeed? Well, I can't say I've seen many deal breakers on defense to verify it, but the few I've found didn't prove much of a struggle. I guess she requires a degree of restraint when it comes to spamming blockbusters. Or you can always land a curse, that works too. In offense, it's fair to say she wasn't designed with rift battles in mind. She's too random to make her work in that environment. But at least she proves strong, and it can be fun to spam blockbusters while seeing a myriad of divas fly. So I'll give her credit for that. Oh no, it's with rakes! Green Reaper is convenient for a few situations. She has one of, if not the easiest, in burst polarity in the game. It only requires a single blockbuster from either side. It could theoretically double down as defensive, but as long as you know what to carry, you're all set. Basically just don't use Ophelia against her. Also, a big seller of her ability is having Mortuary charges instantly loaded once she kills an opponent, as well as gaining two Miasma stacks. Her attack is passable enough, but it normally won't kill most enemies in a rapid fashion. Still, having an instant charge ready to be used at any moment has its conveniences. Most characters or nodes featuring revivals are negated thanks to Grin. However, Biting Cold still beats her to the punch, as she can actually counter instant revivals like Plot Twisted. Something Grin cannot do. She's a decent convenience variant, but doesn't go further than that. <laughs> oh shit, the unthinkable has happened, and Big Ben finally has a really good variant. Brass Bandit is a powerhouse. Not only does he have access to buff removal, he also drains health once every 10 combo hits. He manages to have both good buff control, profiting from Ben's primary forte, and recovers while doing so. It's not filial levels of recovery, of course, but it can help chip out some extra points. There's also Enrage added in for good measure, as means of coverage for Ben's low attack. But it doesn't end there, as Brass Bandicoot takes Dream Ben's ability and makes it viable for offense. 
This time, instead of relying on being knocked down, he only needs to lower the opponent's health by 20%. A tall order, but when you consider both the health drain and the enrage gains, it's not as difficult as it may initially seem. And if you combine it with particular supports like Sketchy, this can make for amusing constant resets. The biggest win for Big Ben in a long while has arrived, and here's hoping his kid gets a similar treatment of care. Noble Mogul is mostly okay. Support-wise, she can be considered a faster Persona assistant. It's a bit more convenient, but chances are it won't change much of the match's outcome. What could affect it though would be applying a 15% damage bonus per barrier stack. Like types only though, and your best choices to make the most of it would happen to be Rockstar, Maid of Honor, Persona assistant, and Noble Mogul herself. But you could always slap either these or other barrier supports and have a stronger light type benefit from the damage increase. Nonetheless, the bigger highlight is Noble gaining immunity while she benefits from barrier. That's actually not too bad, making her capable of somewhat brute forcing a number of situations. Although standalone, you have to wait 20 seconds for that to kick in. I'd say the immunity part makes Noble more relevant than anything, but perhaps in need of stalling to make it work. Oh, you never seen a check before? <laughs> If Hex Calibur proves one thing, is that the devs are clearly biased towards the Gun Granny. I mean, hey, Yuri sells. Anyway, at first glance, she may come across as having a niche on defense, as once she gets hit with 10 combo hits, she'll gain unflinching, making her more difficult to deal with. But that's pretty far from the truth. 10 combo hits is a fairly good window to counter her in every fashion. Either go with precision, course, deadeye, whatever floats your boat. Not like it matters much anyway, it's offense that becomes her true call to action. The 10 combo hits also apply whenever she lands them, and while benefiting from her unflinching, she'll gain permanent precision. It's pretty busted, more so if you're one of the lucky few to have Dahlia's prestige unlocked on her, or if you're unwell enough to run Girl's Night Out on offense. It's likely not as effective as Windswept, given it doesn't last as long, but she can get the job done for sure. Moreover, with Perma Precision active, all shots are unblockable and grant a 10 second immunity, letting you bust through defenses even further. If you're skilled enough, you can consistently keep all of your opponents paralyzed. No doubt she poses a massive threat in most defenses. As to whether she can blitz through anything like Host did, it's up in the air, but being completely negated by Pain Wheels makes her not as busted. At least Hex has a field where she's not advisable. A ver, ¿qué quieres decir? Me cago en Dios. But I've just come into possession of a cure for insomnia. It comes in capsule form. For best results, they must be taken internally. Here is the handy applicator. It is an amazingly simple device. An idiot can operate it, and indeed many do.